Can you solve this in your head? 333 cubed plus 444 cubed plus 555 cubed equals x cubed. If you reached for a calculator, you're not alone. These numbers look massive. But what if I told you there's a hidden mathematical identity that makes this trivial? Stick around, because once you see it, you'll never forget it. Here's the key. These numbers aren't random. 333, 444, 555. Notice anything? They're all repeating digits. And that's our first clue. Each one is actually a multiple of 111. And that simple observation is about to unlock a beautiful identity that's been hiding in plain sight. So let's make this structure explicit. 333 is just 3 times 111. 444 is 4 times 111. And 555 is 5 times 111. This factorization is going to unlock everything. Now, to make progress, I need to remind you of one of the fundamental rules of exponents, the power of a product rule. When you have something like a times b, all raised to the nth power, that's the same as a to the n times b to the n. This rule is going to be essential for what comes next. So let's apply this power rule to each term in our equation. We can break apart each of these cubed products. This gives us 3 cubed times 111 cubed plus 4 cubed times 111 cubed plus 5 cubed times 111 cubed. And now, something interesting starts to emerge. Do you see what's happened? Every single term on the left side has 111 cubed as a factor. This is exactly the kind of common factor we can pull out using basic algebra. So we can factor out 111 cubed, leaving us with 111 cubed times the quantity, 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed. The whole problem now boils down to figuring out what's in these parentheses. So let's dive into this sum of cubes. What we're about to discover is genuinely surprising. Let's compute this step by step. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125. So when we add these up, 27 plus 64 plus 125, we get 216. Now, at first glance, 216 might just look like some random number. But here's the thing. It's not random at all. 216 is actually a perfect cube. Specifically, it's 6 cubed. Think about how remarkable this is. The sum of 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed equals 6 cubed. This is one of those beautiful mathematical identities that feels almost too perfect to be true. Now that we have this beautiful identity in hand, let's go back and see how it solves our original problem. Remember, we had simplified our original equation down to this. 111 cubed times the quantity 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed equals x cubed. And now we know exactly what this expression in parentheses equals. It's not some complicated number we need to calculate. It's simply 6 cubed. So we can substitute to get 111 cubed times 6 cubed equals x cubed. Now I can use our power rule in reverse. Since we have a cubed times b cubed, that's the same as a times b, all cubed. So this becomes 111 times 6, all cubed equals x cubed. And 111 times 6 is 666. So we have 666 cubed equals x cubed. Which means x must be 666, just like that. We've solved what seemed like an impossibly complex calculation without ever having to compute those massive cubes directly. Now, this result is so elegant that it almost seems too good to be true. So let's do a quick sanity check by testing whether this pattern holds more generally. What if we try the same idea with different multiples? 
Let's try this with multiples of 2. If our pattern is truly general, then 6 cubed plus 8 cubed plus 10 cubed should equal 12 cubed. Let's see if that's actually true. So we need to check whether 6 cubed plus 8 cubed plus 10 cubed equals 12 cubed. Let's compute these cubes. 6 cubed is 216. 8 cubed is 512. 10 cubed is 1,000. And 12 cubed is 1,728. Now, 216 plus 512 plus 1,000 is indeed 1,728. Perfect. The pattern absolutely holds, which gives us confidence that our original solution is correct. So what have we actually discovered here? This beautiful pattern isn't just some numerical coincidence. What we've stumbled upon is a beautiful general identity. For any number n, the sum of 3n cubed plus 4n cubed plus 5 n cubed always equals 6n cubed. This works for any value of n whatsoever. Our original problem was just the special case where n equals 111. By recognizing this underlying structure, we transformed what looked like a computational nightmare into an elegant algebraic insight. And that's the power of looking for patterns in mathematics. What seemed impossible became inevitable once we saw the right structure. If you enjoyed exploring this beautiful identity, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical discoveries. Thanks for watching.